نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن شاء الله تعالى. We will start our course today. Today's course is about إمارة المساجد، which is taking care of. The house of Allah, taking care of the house of Allah. But just to refresh our mind, yesterday we come across about few ahadith, few ahadith. As we say, as a human being, we have to protect ourselves from those shayatin al ins wal jinn. The devil among us and the jinn. I think myself I'm going to go over there. <laughs> Something good is there, right? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> good. We ask Allah to give us Jannah. Yeah. We need name. May Allah give us Jannah. Yeah. Jannah is beautiful, 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 yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, we talk about two hadiths, today we're gonna quickly go over the, the third one, and we go over our the topic. The third one was the hadith where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when a man come to him and ask him, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept telling him, don't get angry. La kagda. La kagda. Ki kana jimi. Faragdada miraran. Hadith say faragdada miraran. And the man keep, you know, asking. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam many, many times. And he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept telling the man, don't get angry. Imana, he kana jimi. He wano, he kana jimi. So, if this is the third hadith about yesterday about your weak places where the shaitan targets you to put something on you we say the first one when you are in the bathroom akramakumullah you take all your clothes of those malaika so they there to protect us from the shayateen they stay out and the second one we tell you make sure when you're young make sure you close your mouth you close your mouth and the sunnah of our Nabi, alayhi salatu was salam, there's a way to do it. Either you, salam alaikum, either you do it this way or you do it this way. Right? But make sure you cover it. And we say make sure before you take your bed, you take udu if you can. If you cannot, you read the askar. At least read ayat al kursi one time. You know, sometimes you are having bad dream. You know, you're failing from 100 stage, coming down before you reach there, you wake up. You know, so all this is a uh, shayateen. And sometimes it's like uh, someone, you know, is pushing on you. You try to skip, you scream, and nobody can hear you. You know, so to avoid all this, I have to do. If you can take Udu, fine. But make sure at least you read Ayatul Kursi. Right? The way to do it is to put your two in here like this. Two, 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 three times. Right? And you read the Azkar. Basically, you read Ayatul Surah Al Fatih, Ayatul Kursi, Allah, Prost, Gari, Fala, Kul, Gari, Nas. And you massage your body with it. One time. You do it again, two times. You do it again, three times. Khalas. But most of the time, when you get off from this taxi, you paralyze. You can even read Qurwala one time because you so tired. If this is the case, make sure before your eye close, you read Ayatul Kursi one time. 
all you read, do surah one time, even you don't do the whole sunnah. It protects you, it's very, very good. And our children, don't allow them to sleep if you don't do this to them. Don't do that. Or a they're going to have a problem. When they get in at the age of seven and eight, so you teach them, they do it for themselves. It's very good. It's very good. Sometimes you see when the children they're sleeping, you hear them screaming. Or they just jump, I'm scared. Or I see something. Because we don't protect them. Protection is not what your chef tell you to put in the neck. Or to put in this. Or to make him take a shower with those things called nasi. I used to have a little boy like that in Masjid Aqsa. Before he come to the class, I don't know what kind of nasi is that. But once he entered the class, subhanAllah. It's a good perfume. Nobody can study no more. So we tried to speak to the daddy, but it was kind of like he have a gene. I don't want to hear again screaming in the masjid. He take the kid out. You know, this little kid, seven years. He have a one here in the chest. Little kid. He have a one in the neck. And the father put another one here. Not only that, but when he entered the class, kids complain because Masjid Kasaba is smelling. We tried to talk to the daddy. He took the kid out. That we, Wahabia, we make everything haram. So, I don't want to say the country. We just leave it like that. You know? So, the thing is, don't take your own kid, give it to Shaitan. Protection is those things. When they're coming out, you take them. The very first dua that you have to teach your children is a protection dua. When they come out, you know, at the school, there's a lot of problem there. There's a lot of bad kids there. There's a lot of problem there. For them to stay away from the trouble, take them again, the dua when you're going out. Take them, Bismillah, Anytime you come out with them, tell them to say the dua. They're going to say the dua. When you're coming out from your house, there's a shaitan there, two shaitan waiting for you. Once you come out, you say Bismillah, Tawakkaltu ala Allah, wa la hawla wa la quwata ila billah. They're going to look at each other. They will say, let's leave this guy. We don't have no way to touch him. They will leave him. So the third one, he says, Rasulullah sallam, to the Sahabi, the man that come to ask him, la takdab, la takdab, la takdab, three times. Don't give mad, don't give mad, don't give mad. It doesn't mean normally, Every human being, sometimes if a thing happens to you, you get mad. But it's trying to say, make sure that you don't lose the control. Like you get mad until you can do nothing. You lose the control. Your eyes become red. You sway in. You can't control yourself. You think, once you do that, you are weak. Shaitan can take you right there. Shaitan can take you right there. When you get mad, he has given medicine for that. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew. When he said to the man, the man was asking him about the deed. He said, don't get mad. It's a good medicine for us. No matter what, something happened to you, try to control yourself. Don't let shaitan possess you. Don't let shaitan be in you. Because if you are very mad, angry, you can't control yourself no more. That's your weakest part. Shaitan can go into you. That's why he saw Salam continue to give a medicine. When you are very angry, right? You are very mad, change your position. If you are standing, sit down. If you are sitting, laying on your side. Or you lay down completely. Or you have a water, open and drink a little bit. Keep saying, Auz Bilaim na Shaitan Rajim. If you can go and take Udu, because to get mad is from the Shaitan. And it's the heat. Is a fire. Go and pull it down with the udu. And if you can, despair from the place that you are getting angry from. Leave the place to avoid the shaitan. So let's make sure that we protect ourselves with the ayat and the zikr of an Nabi, alayhi salatu wa salam, insha'Allah ta'ala. If Allah give us time, we have our brothers of here. Inshallah, we're going to have at least one day between Maghrib and Insha a week, especially for the dua. So for us to learn the dua to protect ourselves, Insha'Allah Ta'ala.
you know. But the problem is, <laughs> you, you give a class for two hours, is to save ourselves from those shayateen, lies, the trompets, the mantel, the marabouts qui sont de haut là-bas, qui prend l'argent des gens, cadeau. On les donne 1000 dollars, 2000 dollars, 4000 dollars. Mais si ce sunna, on vous enseigne, doit bien, bien, fils, ça veut dire là, on met 50 cents, then we walk away. Someone save you 2000 dollars, you're gonna give me 50 cents, Allah, to walk away? As Bam say, we're gonna check your pocket next time. So save your money. Now, uh, briefly, let's start our dars dad. We were trying to start it since uh, yesterday, which is Imaratul Masajid. Who should take care of the masjid? To take care of the house of Allah. Who should do that? And Allah described the kind of the brothers, though you should take care of his house. And if you are blessed by Allah to be one of those that who are taking care of the house of Allah, what Allah says about you. Because, in Allah إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا if Allah loves you, Allah is going to use you. If Allah loves you, Allah is going to use you. The use of Allah is to put you on his way. To do for him. Clearly, to do for him. Allah use you to do for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, there's many ayahs. But he says, those who take care of the house of him, those are the sincere believers. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ إِلَىٰ آخِرِ الْآيَةِ Those are the sifat of those who taking care of the house of Allah. Allah says, verily, those who take care of his house, those are the sincere believers. Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waliyawmil akhir. And they believe in the last day. Arkanul iman sitta. The pillars of iman. The six pillars of iman. Iman billah is part of it. And iman bil last day is part of it. Those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they knew that there is day. And that day is very close. The name of that day is called the last day. There's no sun after that day. Allah says in the Quran, in Anbiya, waqtarabal wa'adul haqqo. Allah says the true promise. What is the true promise? That the last day, the day of the Qiyamah. Allah says is drawing closer. It's coming closer. Day after day, we're getting close to the Akhirah. We're getting close to the Akhirah. So Allah said, those who believe in that day, those are the one take care of the house of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa aqama salat Now you come to the arkan of Al-Islam. And they establish the salat. <coughs> they didn't perform the salat. Performing the salat and establish the salat is different. Ada salata wa aqama salata is two things completely different. If you perform the salat, you just come to do your three rakah maghrib khalas. But to establish the salat, it generates everything around the salat. You take care of your iman. You take care of the janaba. You take care of the preparation before the salat. You watch the condition of the salat. We, we watch the time. You don't pray before the time. You take care of the udu. You do the udu nicely. And so and so. You pray with a clean clothes, the clean play. You face the qibla. You make sure in the salat you do the khushu very good. You recite nice. You do the fara'id nice. You did not steal in the salat. Because the thief is the one who steal in the salat. He pray like a bird. Allah, 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 
So, the one who take care of the salat is the one that supposed to take care of the house of salat. This is the problem here. We've been here for 20, 30 years. As we talk about it at the Juma last time, many of us, we don't pay the tax. And I think many of you are aware of that. Many of the brothers, very good, but they don't give a zakat. Some of us don't even know that the Muslim is supposed to give a zakat. Yeah, some of us even know. Not giving the name, but sometimes some people call you. You are scared for yourself, but you're scared for them too. They may be here more than 10, 20 years. That's what start I never hear about zakat. So what I should do now? And they're good, healthy, and they have good money too. And zakat, as the scholars say, al-ma'loom in a dini bi darura. Those things, nobody is supposed to teach you that you have to know them. Those things have to be known. Those are basic things. The one who should take care of the house of Allah after all this again is the one who has given his zakat. Only one time a year, right? You only take every 200. How much is every 200 again? 25. 25. That's how much. Five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah. 225, Mohammed. Don't make me run there. That's too much. That's thousand. Two five percent. Yeah. Two point five percent. One thousand is what? Twenty-five. One thousand divided by four is twenty-five. So if it's every two hundred and twenty-five dollar moment, I don't think even imams are going to give that shit. <laughs> because we are struggling to give five dollars from uh, two hundred and twenty-five is too much. So every five that two hundred we take a twenty-five from it. Every thousand dollar we give twenty-five. Two hundred is a five dollar. Look, two hundred dollars, just take a five dollar from me and give. I think that's nothing. But when it's time to take that five dollar, that's a problem. That's a problem. Now Shaitan is coming on you. Oh, this is too much. Come on, you're gonna buy a metro car. You know, you're gonna change your brake. Oh, you're gonna send to your auntie. Oh, yo, you're gonna finish your house. Forget about it. Let's wait for next month, next check, and so, and so, and so. And the malaika of the dead is after you. He catch you on the road, you sleep over there. You die with the credit of You don't give us a car. Oh, you don't give, you don't give, you don't give. You continue. You're healthy. Giving money, everything. One day you have a one problem, financial problem. All your money is gone. Supposed to go because you don't give the money. You don't give the right of Allah. Make sure we give it zakat. Even if it's a little, it bless your money. Give it zakat, bless your money. And also, cleanse your money and cleanse yourself. As Allah said to uh, Prophet Muhammad whose min amwalihi and whose fellow amrim yadullu alal uju take from their money. He don't say ask them or no. He say whose min amwalihi take from their money who they believe it. Sada katan tuto hiru hum biha take a part of their money and clean them, purify them with them. To hero whom be or to the key him be him or solely ali him and make dua for him in the solar takasaka no law. Walam yaksha in the law and after giving zakat, walam yaksha in the law. Before we pass in here, for those who have a silver and a gold, you have to give a zakat of that. I know our mothers and our sisters, they are sahibatul fit that was zahab, they have a gold, they have a even sometimes diamond, Malaki has that. So we make sure we give a zakat of that. And we have to give it in Nisab. It's not every money that you have to give. You have to give, no, the Nisab of that money. And it's annually, but it's not for everyone. Nisab is there. When the Nisab is complete, you give. If not, you only give a simple saraka. You don't have to give a zakat. But the dust is not there today. And everything you go by the by the by the by the gold by the gold or the silver i think 595 is the nisab 595 gram that's the nisab for the silver and the 85 gram that's the nisab for the gold so the 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 uh, if um, if you have 85 gram of gold 
saved in your account for one year, so you have to do the zakat out of that. Right? So now, 85 gram of your gold, you ask, the day you are ready to give a zakat, you ask the market, how much is the one gram today in the gold? If they tell you $50, you multiply $50 by 85. The total of that, if it's a 5,000, you have a damn 5,000 in your account for a year, you're allowed to give a zakat now. If not, you are not. Right? So, وَلَمْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا Allah. The one who's taking care of the masjid of Allah, true believers in Allah in the last day, and he performed the salat, established the salat, and he gave the salat, and he has no fear from anyone except Allah. No matter what happened, no matter what people say to him, no matter what condition he's living in, his fear is Allah is taking care of the house of Allah. He knows that Allah is going to take care of his house too. Because it's a promise. In Tansurullah, Yansurukum. If you have Allah is a prophet, uh, is, a, is a promise, condition, then Allah is going to help you. Walam yaksha illallah. His vision is to help the deen of Allah. Helping the deen of Allah, it has to be on the basira. It has to be on the tawheed again and again. If you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on ignorance or the shirk, is negative. It has to be on the sunnah. If you worship Allah based upon the bid'ah, is negative. Because your teacher is... Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. So why you go and take someone else which is now from the Huda of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. So it has to be on the basira because you don't want to do a free job without no pay. But you have to do this job good and you need to get the training. And what are the principles to do this job? You have to know that. The two first things that you have to look for it are Tawheed and the Sunnah and you do with the sincerity. You don't want people to see on the street, oh, this they go and they must get every day. You don't want that. You don't want that. But sometimes that will happen to you. What do you say about that? Companions. They said to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi about the bag of ikhlas. Sometimes, you know, we did the we did the ibadah, you know, everything for Allah. But even that, people still talking about it. Like you do good. For the Surah, right? Let's look if it's a billion, everybody five hundred, who wanna give a thousand dollars? The first one to say I will give a thousand dollars, that will encourage the rest to give. That's not showing up. You're doing sincerely for Allah. But people are going to talk about it. What is that? And you don't like it. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's a bushura, that's a good tidy for you, a happiness for you, a good sign for you that the action that you are doing is there in the general way for you. You don't want it, but people are still talking about it. So, these two things, you don't lose. If you do for Allah, you do ibadah for people. People are going to talk about it. But by Allah, you lose. But if you do for Allah, Allah is going to know it. And he's going to mention you to the malaika. No matter what, people are going to talk about it. So you got to go. So which one you choose? Do it for Allah. Allah is going to let his slaves talk about it. Even you don't want it. Right? And Allah said, the one who's supposed to take care of his house is the one who don't fear nothing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His fear is only from Allah. He's ready for it. <laughs> Give me, I'm done. Give me. I'm all for you. Okay, go. You are welcome. After you. If the one who don't feel accept Allah, you're ready for it. They're going to talk about me. They're going to oppress me. They're going to beat me. My family is going to get suffer. My this, my this. But you want to take care of the house of Allah. You don't listen but Allah. Because you have something in front of you. And Allah has taken guarantee for you. If you take care of my house, I will take care of you. We believe in Allah. And we know that the promise of Allah is there. Woman asdaqu. Min Allahi tila, which speech that you can find which is truthful than the word of Allah. Even between us in the society, 
those who are strict in the masjid all the time, sincerely, they don't want to miss a prayer in the salat. They dare for the class. They dare for the lecture. They dare to clean. They do. They dare to go buy water. Bimana, they do it for the masjid. These people, you see them. You think they have a billion? No doubt. With their hundred dollar a week, they have a happy life more than your thousand dollars. Allah give them peace of mind. Try to speak to the people, those who are always in the marriage, that we thought you did sacred. Some of us used to have a problem day after day. But after they move in the masjid, the problem is gone. Wallahi. Their problem is completely gone. As the brothers around. If they finish working, they don't pray maghrib in the masjid. Oh, oh. It's like a day day. It's not good. They don't pray isha, day day is not good. Imam don't make a speech, their day is not good. They don't clean the masjid, their day is not good. Their soul, rajulun, kalbuhu, mu'allakun bil masajid. They always in the masjid. So this kind of the brother, you see them. They taking care of the house of Allah. Allah has taken care of their business. When the problem is coming before you face them, you don't even know that the problem was coming to you. Allah will block it, you don't even know. To finish, Abdul Aziz. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Khalifa Qulashai Rashidin. The first Khalifa was, uh, after Prophet Sallallahu the first Khalifa was who? Abakar. Yeah, we gotta help each other sometime, okay? It's a class. Abakar. Second one was? Umar. Usman or Umar? Umar. Can you start again? <laughs> Abu Bakar and uh, Umar, then? Usman. Usman, then? Ali. Ali. That's four, right? How about number fifth? Uh, the one you just said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. The one I just say, uh, Umar bin Abdulaziz, is the one that we call Khalifa Kulafa al Rashidin. Number five of these four companions, Kulafa. But it's not between Ali and him. There were many Khalifa. Why they call him Khalifa Kulafa al Rashidin? And the scholars say, they don't believe. We don't know what Allah has there. But they don't believe someone will come as a leader like him to put dunya on the straight path like him again. That's all. Umar bin Abdul Aziz. But we're not into the story. When he comes, um, when it's time for him to take uh, leadership, to rule all the world as Islam, so now they're going to escort him to his palace, where he's going to stay, where the prison stay, right? From outside until he see, there were army standing everywhere, right and left. Even you cough, they take you out. He's walking, he's looking, he's walking, he's looking, until he reaches the sea. Then he asks, one of his, uh, uh, his uh, general, what is all this? This is no Amir, you know, Rahimakallah, this, you know, the army, they're here to protect you. It's okay. okay. Starting from today, how many of them? They said a number. He said, even they thousand. I will guarantee their payment from today until they dead. I want to free them. Let them go sleep in their house. I don't want any security in my door. They say, Amir, be careful. People don't like you because you're too sweet. They're going to kill you. Say, hey, Allah asked me to be your leader. Allah has chosen me to be your leader. And Allah asked me one thing. Inna Allah ya'murukum bil adli. Allah is asking you to judge with the justice, to be straight. I'm going to apply this ayah. If anyone trying to do something wrong to me, Allah will block him. That will not reach me. And that happened too. If you do for Allah, even someone trying to do something to you, wrong thing to you, to oppress you, Allah will block that. You're sleeping, you're not even aware of that. He sent all of them home. He said, I don't want to secure you, you know. Anybody want to come to my house? I don't want secretary. Just come open the door, I'm there. I don't want Allah to ask me tomorrow. A lady or a brother come, they want to see you for their problem, but the security say you're busy, they couldn't get inside. Allah might take me to the Jahannam because of that. I don't want that to happen. So these are the leaders, which means if you do for Allah, Allah is going to take care of you. The best of the place in this earth to finish 
is the house of Allah. Worst place in this dunya is the marketplace. Law of fear. So Allah said the one who take care of his house is the believers. That's why he says to finish, if you say a man always in a masjid, hey, witness for him that is a movement. So let's come to the masjid. Not only that, let's take care of the house of the masjid. Sometimes just come to the imam. Yeah, what do you need? What the masjid need? Can I vacuum? Physically, you healthy. Can I vacuum? What the masjid need? Do you guys need, a, you know, bathroom tissue? Do you guys need, a, you, know, you know, water? Do the masjid need like a usula? Quran or anything, what can I do? But I don't have money. Can I just vacuum the masjid? Can I go clean the toilet? Of course, do is a blessing for you. We ask Allah to bless us. Yeah. The dust will continue tomorrow, inshallah. Wa azza wa salam alaikum. Salam. 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 Salam.